cinema theater uh, from the 1940s and found it permanently closed uh, because uh, his family is an old Allahabad family. His uncle knew the owners of Lakshmi Talkies and they were gracious enough to have it open for him is when he got access to it. And uh, subsequently, he photographed another uh, three old theatres in Allahabad. And after chatting with the owners and looking up what he had photographed, he realised that there was a distinct possibility that India's single-screen cinema heritage was on the brink of extin extinction and uh, obliteration. And he embarked on this documentation of these spaces and in, and in 13 months has driven around 25,000 kilometres across 10 states. Uh, I will hand over it to Heyman to take you through the journey further. So it, it actually, uh, the, my life as a professional dates back to the mid 1980s uh, when I got introduced to filmmaking uh, as an assistant, production assistant, and uh, started work uh, at the age of 17. Uh, found my way into uh, television for many years. I did television till the year 2000 and. Uh, to the year 2000, actually. I uh, got a break with a very famous filmmaker called Ram Gopal Verma, shot his uh, very famous uh, movie called Company. And uh, because of my association with Vishal Bhardwaj, I did another uh, two films uh, with uh, Vishal, Makri and Makbul. They're both quite famous. Uh, worked with Aparna Sen, uh, worked on a film with Nasir Din Shah, uh, worked on a, a Sanjay Dutt, Arshad Varsi comedy caper, uh, did Kurban, Ishak Zadeh, uh, Arjun the Warrior Prince. Um, what did I do after that? I did a film called Ongli and Dekh Tamasha Dekh. And finally did this huge magnum opus called uh, Brothers with Akshay Kumar and Jackie Shroff. And after that, I just decided that I'd had enough with uh, Bollywood and the Bombay film industry and I decided to move on. So from 2015 onwards, I, uh, I, I uh, started various things. I shot a documentary uh, which is yet to be finished where I interviewed about 16 or 17 uh, very senior Indian cinematographers uh, over the age of 65. In fact, the oldest was, is today 94 years old and he's been blind now for 14, 15 years. He shot all of Manmohan Desai's films and very wonderful man, the father of Indian, well, the, the champion of uh, in-camera special effects for the Hindi movies of that era. Uh, in 2016, then I actually went fully into still photography. I've done about 14 or 15 different uh, projects since then. Somehow, uh, what I do always ends up as being either documentation, uh, historical, uh, human. Um, I somehow find myself constantly photographing things that are on the brink of extinction or, or, or obliteration or death or, you know, being unremembered, which I find very sad. So like Udit said, uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll jump straight to the subject of this particular talk, this session. I uh, belong to Allahabad, my family is from there. And I think from 1971, when I was three years old, I have attended every single Kumbh Mela uh, uh, as a child, as a pre-pubescent, pre 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 as, a, as a, you know, a, teenager and as a young adult and till last year. Uh, last year was an Arth Kumbh and I'd made my plans to reach Allahabad in time and I did. And I was at the Kumbh for three days and somehow uh, the 2019 Kumbh wasn't uh, as simple and pure as one has seen the Kumbh for so many years. I got a little bored uh, because of the Bandobast and I think because of the, the government in, in, in UP at that, at that point of time at the moment they decided to turn it into this huge magnum opus of, a, of an event. And it kind of lost its simplicity. And I was at home one afternoon. Uh, it was a lovely winter's day, uh, warm and sunny and uh, with a chilly wind. And I decided to pick up my camera bag and go for a walk. Allahabad University, a beautiful old building dating back to the 1800s. Um, I, I haven't been there for years. So I decided to take my camera bag and go and take some pictures. Uh, there's one block there in, in particular called the Science Block, which is just a masterpiece of, of uh, you know, architecture. Combines a lot of Indian styles, is made of yellow stone and it's just stunning. However, on the way, I suddenly remembered uh, that there used to be a cinema on that street, on that road. And I asked a rickshawala uh, who was parked by the side, I said, uh, isn't there a cinema here? 
I don't remember the name. He said, yes, so there's one old cinema called Lakshmi Talkies. And if you just walk up uh, a little further, another 100 meters, you can see those Ashok trees. It's behind that. I said, okay. I went up and there was this beautiful old uh, Art Deco building from the 1940s, Lakshmi Talkies, standing there uh, with this lock on the, on the grill. And uh, I mean, the exterior was somewhat decrepit and there was garbage lying around. The cinema itself looked fairly... Uh, uh, neat and clean and uh, well looked after. I asked the Panwala uh, uh, who was who had a little shop next to the, the cinema. So I said, Bahia, what happened? You know, he said, well, it shut uh, in uh, 1990, a long time back, 1999, sorry. Yeah, 20 years ago. And uh, no, sir, now it's going to be demolished in this, you know, wonderful mall is going to be constructed here. So I felt really bad because Allahabad has seen a lot of uh, uh, you know, um, a, a thoughtless, thoughtless destruction over the last 15, 17 years where even heritage structures have been pulled down and things have been just demolished at random. And, you know, they've cut off the facades of buildings that were, you know, 200, 250 years old just to widen some road. Instead of just you know, regulating the traffic, uh, I find that really strange. And I felt, you know, that just another beautiful old building is going to get knocked down and this dirty, I use this word a lot now, this Hindi word, niras, niras means without juice, if you know what I mean. So just another faceless glass building, you know, is going to come up in the place of this handcrafted, beautiful Art Deco building. And I went off to the university, did what I had to, came back home and I asked my uncle, I said, you know the owners of Lakshmi Talkies? He said, yes, what do you want? So I tell them your mad nephew is in town and he wants to take photographs of the theatre. So the, the Agarwal family very graciously sent the keys the next day. I went there in the afternoon. And they'd stripped the cinema of everything. There were no machines, no furniture, no seats, no nothing. It was just this empty shell because it was about to be demolished. And when I entered the premises, I realized that uh, I, I had this sense of deja vu because the first thing you would see in the lobby was this beautiful statue of uh, the goddess Lakshmi. And while everything was gone, she was still there. But even one of her hands was broken, you know, and she had three arms and a dusty sari that she was in. Dust on her nose, dust on her ears, and on. And I shot the place, and it had these beautiful Art Deco banisters inside. And uh, when you went into the cinema a hall, into the auditorium, the left wall and the right wall both had these huge, you know, fifteen by thirty hand-painted murals. Uh, on the left was uh, Bharat Milap from the Ramayana, and on the right side was uh, Sita uh, with Love and Kush, her two sons. And I shot the cinema. And when I came home, uh, I remembered another really old theater, another Art Deco masterpiece of its era called Niranjan Talkies. Again, spoke to uh, the family, the Bhargavs. They were very gracious and they said, look, there's a lot of dispute uh, in the family, but there's a Jusawala next to uh, the cinema and we'll call him. Go and meet him. He knows the way to get inside and whatever you can access is all yours. So I went into this absolute ruin, you know, with light coming through the roof and uh, uh, again, no seats, no uh, furniture, nothing. Just this, you know, ruin of a cinema where, which in its time was the first cinema in UP to get air conditioning. And after I came out, I was chatting with the shopkeeper around and they told me stories about uh, what their father and, you know, their parents and grandparents had told them. That when the cinema was built, uh, at the end of every show, there used to be a little crowd of of locals who'd stand at the exit gate so they could experience the school air coming out of uh, the cinema, the air conditioning, basically. Then I shot two more cinemas, which were uh, kind of open, but on their last legs. One beautiful Art Deco meets colonial uh, uh, cinema called uh, Mansur over Talkies. And they still had their old projectors in there. And, I, and the old projectionist was there as well. So I shot a portrait of him with his projectors. And I shot one... 70s cinema called Chandralok, which if I remember correctly, was the biggest cinema of its era. It, I think it had 1,450 seats. And it was just magnificent. You know, they had these beautiful glass sculptures in the lobbies, uh, which was an art form from the 50, 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, with these, uh, you know, uh, uh, pastoral scenes, uh, uh, women, apsaras with their pots of water and in their, in their you know, blouse and skirts and trees and deer and tigers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when I came back to Bombay, uh, I realized that I'd done something really interesting. And I realized that through talking to the owners of those cinemas, 
everyone had said more or less the same thing. You know, they said, look, you know, cinema exhibition as a business seems to be dead. And, uh, you know, finally it is a property in a prime piece of land and it needs to, uh, it needs to, to be alive. You know, it needs to generate an income for the family and it has to be a you know, positive business proposition. And I perfectly agree with that. You know, one, one might have the sense of nostalgia, but for a person who owns a property of that stature, which is a commercial venture, you know, has to, you know, give back in some way. And then I realized that uh, from what I'd understood, that in the next three or four years, there's a, you know, a very distinct possibility that all these single screen cinemas in India will probably get demolished. I, you know, and uh, even, you know, and you realize that multiplexes as a structure are, again, emotionless. You know, they're all the same. You travel to London or New York or, you know, Agra or Delhi or Pondicherry. A multiplex is a multiplex, you know. The, Everything is the same. Uh, the tiling is the same. The seats are the same. It's just mass-produced replicas of each other. And our single-screen cinemas were a masterpiece of individuality, of you know the the, the thought and ambition of the owners, uh, the architecture, the, the interior design, the details, the, the seats. And I realized that I stumbled upon uh, this really interesting subject. So I started going around in Bombay to the older theaters, trying to get permissions from them. But uh, Bombay being Bombay and people being either suspicious or just selfish and disinterested. I just shot two cinemas in, uh, in Bombay, which were really old. And uh, they weren't just old. They, they were in a part of the town that used to be known as the Playhouse uh, area, which is now the red light area, uh, Falkland Road. And it was the theater street of Bombay in, in the 19, late 1800s and the 1900s, early 1900s. And the two cinemas I shot were actually proscenium style uh, theatres when they were built. So they had these huge, beautiful curved balconies overlooking what must have been a stage that eventually became uh, a screen. And uh, after getting, you know, uh, shunted about in Bombay, I realized that I was wasting my time. And a friend of mine in Nasik, Vinay, his family owned three theatres in that town, one of which uh, Vijayanan Talkies is probably the oldest uh, theatre in India that's still running. Uh, uh, Vijayanan Theatre, it was built by his grandfather. And Dada Sahib Palke's uh, first film was screened there, uh, was, the, was the first place to screen so many years ago. So I went to Nasik and he helped me with a few more. I shot about eight or nine cinemas, 11 cinemas in Nasik. Uh, some very old, uh, one cinema called uh, Circle Talkies, which actually uh, was the way. Uh, Dada Sahib Palke used to be an usher. That's the story the owner told me. And uh, then I just started going further and further. I went to Gujarat. Um, I started in Bhuj and uh, a town called Gandhidam. Found a beautiful theatre there called Oslo, uh, named after the, the ambassador from Sweden and their visit uh, when they came to inaugurate uh, the theatre. Went around Saurashtra, went around... Uh, uh, came back to shot coastal Maharashtra, went down to Goa, where I found some amazing cinemas. Went up coastal Maharashtra, uh, central Maharashtra. So, you know, I, I've done 10 states now. At some point, I, I realized that I should also do Kashmir. Now, uh, Srinagar had about 11 cinemas in its heyday. Because of the usual reasons, I think in the late 80s, their cinemas were, were all closed and um, some of them were demolished. Three or four of them became army and uh, CRPF camps. So I called a friend of mine uh, in Srinagar and I said, I want to come to Srinagar to shoot the cinemas there. He said, well, you know, three of them are camps with the police. And if you uh, pull out a camera in front of them, someone's going to pull out a gun and, you know, pop you one, uh, which didn't seem like a good idea. Uh, the others, he said, there are two in, in, in civil, which uh, I'll show you. And I figured that, you know, going all the way to Srinagar, just shoot two cinemas doesn't seem like making any sense. You know, since I fund everything myself, it was a, not an easy thing to do. However, after talking to him 10 minutes later, I said, look, you know, someone who doesn't have the authority to actually refuse me permission is someone I should not uh, listen to and then make an effort on my own. So I googled uh, the, the, the office of the IG of Jammu and Kashmir for the CRPF, sorry. Got a number, called uh, their office in Srinagar. Uh, the PA uh, to the, the IG took the phone, 
gave it to the IG. The IG was very sweet. He spoke to me. And he said, look, I'm going to give you the number of, and the name of someone in Srinagar uh, who's a commandant. He will guide you. He won't give you the permissions, but he'll guide you with what to do. Called him. He got really excited. He gave me the number of the PRO in Delhi. I happened to be in Delhi. I called him. He asked me for an email uh, stating my intention and uh, my, my credentials and so on. So I wrote them an email expecting, you know, government organization, you write to them, but now it's going to be quite an era before they reply. To my surprise, they actually responded in, what, 15 minutes? And this gentleman called me, uh, Mr. Moses Dinakaran, very sweet man. He called me, he said, look, Hemant, I gather you're in uh, Delhi at the moment. I said, yes. He said, well, can you come and meet us urgently? I said, sure. So we had an appointment for the following morning at 10 o'clock. I go in and I'm sitting in this room with uh, a bunch of IGs. Uh, all very erudite and uh, very interesting people. One of them, of course, uh, chose to talk to me about uh, cinema halls in general. And he told me that uh, the popcorn in a multiplex is superior to the popcorn in a single screen cinema. And then there was this hubbub that happened. And it was just one of those amazing moments in life where you're sitting with uh, very senior police officers. And uh, suddenly a popcorn machine arrives in the office. And Act 3 or Act 2 popcorn packets... And this whole popcorn session happens with uh, senior police officials, which is just absolutely stunning. And they said, look, we called you here to, to talk to you. And you know, we have no, in, you know, uh, issues of giving you permission to shoot the cinemas. But if you have the time, and since you want to end with Srinagar, would you like to do the Amarnath Yatra for us? And shoot it for a book we want to do? I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. So I was suddenly packed off. I went to Bombay, uh, repacked all my luggage for a mountain hike. And I went to Jammu did the entire Amarnath Yatra with the cops over 15 days and uh, ended up in Srinagar and shot the cinemas there. And I found only three cinemas uh, which were still uh, standing in, in more or less original shape. They've been turned into barracks and uh, communication centers and they had trucks and you know wireless systems and, and soldiers. And um, it was just really fascinating. One of them had turned the auditorium of that particular cinema into a gymnasium and recreational center with a stage and a drum kit and a synthesizer and a, a temple and just two or three of the old metal seats still lying there on the side. And uh, one really interesting thing is that uh, since auditoria normally uh, you know, inclined uh, from a higher to a lower towards the screen, they'd leveled it so the doors had been you know, chopped from the, from the bottom as the floor had come up. And on that wall where the exit signs were, there were these shooting targets where they used to practice their uh, target shooting. Did Srinagar, uh, then I did Punjab, got some fantastic uh, cinemas in, in Punjab, went up to the, the Indo-Pakistan border, went to Firozpur and Fazilka and found cinemas there from the 1920s, 1930s. All of them closed, all of them just stunning, you know. Uh, and since then, I have... Like Udit said at the outset, I've driven nearly 25,000 kilometers. I've, as of last week, I've shot 445 cinemas in 10 states of India. And uh, it's just absolutely fascinating listening to the stories from the owners, from the projectionists. Uh, I do these portraits wherever I find old 35mm uh, projectors. I do a portrait of the older, uh, of the operators who are the life and soul, you know, of, of these old cinemas. And... One of them, uh, I'll just narrate this little story. Uh, he, he said he was in his 60s and his father had been the operator in the same theater when it was built and uh, had been an operator most of his life. So he, he said, you know, now I've been taught how to run these digital projectors. But I was here for 25 years before digital came in and operated these big machines. They still had their machines in place. He said, what's really interesting is that till we had 35mm machines, you know, we'd still have a couple of breakdowns where the film would get stuck or you know, the focus would be out or, uh, you know, some screen calibration would be a, a miss, a skew. I said that the people uh, in the theatre would actually acknowledge my presence and I'd get abused. Saying, Abhe, focus kar, Saleh, kya ho hai? He said, but digital, they've also forgotten that there's a man in the projection room actually running a projector. So, that happened. Now, a lot of people ask me why I'm shooting so many cinemas and uh, the answer is really simple. I could have stopped at 25, you know. But every single theatre is a surprise. You know, I, there's very little research or, uh, to be had. There's very little... Uh, there's no visual reference. So I, I find my way to these towns. I find my way 
So I have this really interesting way of, uh, I do a little research through Google Maps and just dial and you know, stuff like that to see which are the theaters in a town. You can tell by the names which have been, you know, which are multiplexes and which are not. Um, I reach a town, I check into my hotel, I park my Jeep. I come down with a small camera and uh, find an elderly rickshawala who then uh, I tell him, look, I'm going to give you twice the money that, uh, you know, your meter is going to show. I want you to show me all the old cinemas in the town and don't show me multiplexes. Don't show me cinemas that have been you know, excessively renovated or with that dirty aluminium cladding that's become so popular these days. It's so grotesque. Just show me all the old cinemas. I don't care whether they're ruins or shut or whatever, but I want to see old cinemas. So with the prospect of getting double their meter rate, they're really happy and they know all the stories because they've been you know, in that town for so many years. And I say, look, I might stop at some of them. I might meet the owner if he's there or someone. So just relax. No kit pit, no chick chick. Just be with me for the next few hours. And then they take me around and I find, uh, I access my uh, cinemas. I get to do a recce in that sense. And the next day I start. And uh, cinemas that are still running, I have to adjust my timings to their shows. But the cinemas that are closed, uh, the owners have been very gracious. Uh, they've sent people to open them up. They've met me. They've told me stories about how their cinemas began and you know, the circumstances under which, I mean, the kind of stories that you hear are just so, so charming. I find this cinema theater from 1942 in a small town in Maharashtra. I've come looking for it. I find it. I park. I wait for the owner to open a shop that is on the um, outer periphery of, they've incorporated part of the gallery into a shop. He comes, he opens it. I introduce myself and he's really sweet and he uh, shows me the cinema. Uh, this is have projectors. It was from 1942 and has not been renovated since 1942. They still had uh, clay flooring, you know, uh, in front, uh, in the lower stalls. They still had wooden benches and they had wooden seats throughout the cinema. They had wooden seats upstairs, which had got these little cushions. Finally, I think in the 60s, they added cushions. And he told me this really funny story. He said, my grandfather who built the cinema, got so excited and overspent his funds and ended up uh, with a theater, but no, no money for a projector. So finally, uh, after a few months, uh, they saved the money to buy one projector. So they went to Bombay, picked up this projector, brought it. And they had to show two hour movies with one projector, which meant they had three intervals, right? Because they had to change these reels. And he said that in the first week, we realized that with a, you know, almost six, seven minute gap, sometimes by the time a reel was, you know, removed, rewound and uh, rethreaded, the audience used to get a little restless. Uh, some people would even leave and, you know, not be, not be happy with the experience and got their money back. And they, they, uh, that particular town, I'm forgetting, forgetting the name at the moment, was in a part of Maharashtra, which is very famous for its Lavni dancing, its folk dance. So they struck a deal with a local Lavni troupe uh, that would come in the moment the reel would end there'd be this light that came on and he said, my grandfather designed a spinning a color wheel which spun uh, in front of a halogen lamp. So this movie would end, this lamp would come on and he would spin this colored wheel with all this jagmag happening on, on the screen. And they'd extended the, 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 under the, they'd made a little stage. So this group of dancers used to come on and they'd perform for, for the, the duration of time that it took for them to replace the screen, uh, the, the reel on the projector. And, they had this sense of this cue where the moment the, the, the light would go off, the lovely dancers would run and the second reel would come on. I've heard so many stories now and I know I can't recreate that kind of madness that cinema had for, for, for the audiences. But I'm just trying to in, you know, capture these spaces that once uh, resounded with, you know, the era where movies ran for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 weeks, you know, not shows, not, not days, weeks. They had silver jubilees and golden jubilees and diamond jubilees. Uh, I've heard stories about how on the first day, first show, the people who were lucky enough to get their tickets used to be given to Besan Ke Laddu with each ticket or a packet of samosas as a, you know, a, a good shagun for the, for the day, uh, uh, for, the, for the run. I've heard stories about how uh, one cinema in Gujarat, uh, in a really small town. Uh, they told me, the owner told me how his village, so okay now, when we still had 35 mm prints in the olden days, they were expensive. So the films would release in the main centers, which was Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras and so on. 
So by the time that movie came to Ahmedabad, it might be two or three years later. So if a Dilip Kumar film released in Bombay in 1950, there were chances that this, the movie would only come to Ahmedabad in 1952. And by the time it came to their town, it would probably be 1955-56, because then, by then the print would have become cheaper, the physical print that they had to buy. So he said that in our town, we had this <laughs> tradition of, uh, of one of the older people who, had, who was very articulate, He'd be, we'd take a hat around uh, the village and we would collect money and hand it to him for his bus ticket, uh, food, one night's accommodation and the movie ticket. So he would take the bus to go to Ahmedabad and he would watch the movie, spend the night there and come back the next day. When he'd reached the village, there was this whole puja and aarti that used to happen to welcome him back. He would rest for the afternoon and after sunset, he would sit with the entire village and tell them the story of the movie. That was his job. He was the storyteller. He would go see a movie in a distant town, come back and tell everyone the story. And it's just so charming. And he said the story doesn't end there. The, 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 the tale doesn't end there. He said someone from the village a couple of years later would end up seeing that same movie that he, he narrated the story of and say, hmm, something different, you know. So that elderly gentleman would actually add a few scenes and, you know, change the plot a little bit while sitting on the bus on the way home. It's just so beautiful, you know. So I've been having a lot of fun and... Uh, I, I think I'm going to stop for a moment and ask Udit uh, uh, if he wants to show some photographs, uh, uh, which we can then, you know, maybe talk about a little bit. So while we're waiting for the slideshow, I'll tell you another little anecdote where I found this beautiful old theater in Nagpur. And while we're so used to uh, cinema seating rows to be A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, this gentleman's father was a musician and they named the balcony seating Sare Gama Padani. So you go and sit on Saro or Re Do or you know, Pa Ro. It was beautiful. So this is the Lakshmi of Lakshmi Talkies. Uh, this is the statue in the lobby. She was installed, uh, consecrated or installed or uh, whatever the word is, way back in the early 1940s when the cinema was built. And uh, the owners used to uh, do a little puja every day. Uh, in front of the Murti, and now she's just this dusty old statue, uh, Khandit Murti, as they would say, with one arm broken. I found a lot of cinemas called Lakshmi Talkies. I can do a whole book only on cinemas called Lakshmi Talkies. I think I have about 16 or 17 Lakshmi Talkies across India so far. So this one's really interesting. Okay, this one is called Prakash Talkies. I found this in Rajasthan. Wait, just go back to that. I'll tell you when to, to, to move. So this one's really, really interesting. I'd heard about it um, from someone in Rajasthan and someone else gave me the number of the person who used to run this cinema. So this was built in the late 1800s and it was a locomotive shed. Okay, so the railway line used to come through this cinema, uh, this structure in the 1800s. And if you notice, there are, uh, if you're looking at the photograph, there's a, there are two gates on left and right. One is a little larger and one is a little smaller. So the larger gate used to accommodate the broad gauge uh, locomotives and the smaller gate on the right, the, uh, to our right, used to accommodate the narrow gauge. And if you go inside the theater, it still says above the gates, it says broad gauge and narrow gauge in Hindi. And sometime in the 1940s, uh, the railway line shifted a few meters to the other side. And they, it was a long shed and they halved it in the middle. And they turned this half into a movie theater. So you can still see these little details of, uh, you know, where the posters used to be stuck. And uh, there is a photograph, I think, ahead, which has the ticket windows and the, 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 the seating. So this unfortunately got dismantled a couple of years ago and uh, was given back to the royal family since it was on their uh, estate. This is Savai Madhupur, near Jaipur, about three hours from Jaipur. So this is another theme that I've been following, is the, the comic, the comic uh, interlude of... Uh, old cinema toilets where invariably they'd have a, 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 a photograph uh, taken from a poster uh, of a movie star. So the gents lose have male movie stars and the female lose have female movie stars. And this particular cinema in Rajasthan, I found poor Tabu uh, in, a, in a hot spot. And since I'm familiar with her, I've worked on a movie with her and a few commercials with her. I actually sent her this in, uh, in, her, in a typically gracious spirit. 
she said, Hemant, I want a copy of this as a print, please. You know, so I have to go back to Bombay and gift her a print. So that little image in the middle is of uh, Tabu uh, on a Mailai toilet. I think the other really funny one I found was uh, uh, Sanjeev Kumar, poor man. You know, may his soul rest in peace. Sanjeev Kumar hand painted on the door of a men's loo. So they have quite a few uh, funny ones of, of old cinema toilets. This is another theme that I follow. I keep finding uh, some old cinemas which closed a long time back but have never been uh, cleaned or repaired or touched up. So I find these fragmented posters and you can see Amitabh Bachchan from a movie from the 80s. Uh, you can see his eye and you can see his nose and lips. So I have really, yeah, I have about more than 100 photographs of these fragmented posters with, uh, and they're just stunning. You know, they look like, uh, there you are, there's another one. I try and find uh, posters which, you can see one eye in the middle. I try and find them with some human element. Uh, the remains of a human element from that poster, which actually gives a little edge. If it's just, you know, fragmented colors, then it doesn't have that impact. So this one has an eye. You can see a, a, an eye in, in, in black and white staring at you. Here's another one, you know. It's some spooky uh, soft porn film in some small town which ran uh, to houseful shows. So this is really interesting. This is a cinema from 1934 in Bikanir in Rajasthan. And it was built, uh, it was, it's called Ganga Theatre. It was built uh, in the name of the Maharaja of the time, uh, Ganga Singh. And it's just, or it was just absolutely beautiful. The balcony, uh, the manager was there. The film, the theatre has been shut for 15 years. And uh, there's just a manager there who, like a caretaker who, 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 who looks after it. He told me, he took me up to the balcony and he said that where you see these pillars were actually uh, the remains of these little stumps. He said these were actual pillars and the balcony actually had these charokas and all the, the women from the royal family used to have this secret entrance that used to bring them up to this balcony where they could sit behind a parda and watch their movies. So in, in, at some point when I'd shot everything else, I found one door and I pushed it and it opened and I went in uh, with my torch, I found a button, I pressed it, a tube light came on. And it was one little sto old storeroom in the theatre. I found this poster there. Now, this poster is from 1966, if I remember correctly. That's Helen. The, you see the remains of Helen on, on the poster. And the producers were the Wadia brothers. Now, Wadia brothers was the second name for a company called Wadia Movie Tone. Wadia Movie, Movie Tone are the people who made... Uh, the, the fearless Nadia Hunterwali uh, movies and so on. I actually found this, the remnants of this little poster, you know, uh, and it says Sanjeev Kumar at the bottom. And this cinema, this movie is so old that Sanjeev Kumar used to still spell his name with an I, not double, not two E's. So he's S-A-N-J-I-V Sanjeev Kumar as opposed to S-A-N-J-E-V. -E now, I know the current uh, generation of the Warriors. Uh, one of them was in college with me. He passed away some years ago, but I know his, his elder brother as well. And I sent this to him and he was so thrilled. And he wants a print as well. So I have to make him a print of this uh, old fragmented poster of the Wadia brothers. A old poster of uh, Shami Kapoor and uh, Saira Banu's Jungli uh, in that same room. These are all original posters. This is also from 1962, 1964. Just amazing, you know. It's amongst the uh, one of the early color films as well. Next, an old film of Nargis called Rat or Din. I mean, these are movies that are forgotten, and uh, you know, posters that barely exist, other than maybe with a collector. And there they are; they were on the wall in this old room. Here you are. Uh, this is a newer poster or on, on, on an old cinema that's closed. That is Ranveer Singh, if I'm right. Uh, but I just love the way these posters, uh, you know, uh, fall apart with rain and uh, the, the nat natural elements hitting them in the open. And they turn into these works of art, you know, just look fabulous. So this was one of the fun things that happens, you know. Uh, this was when I uh, reached Agra. And I'd been told about this really old cinema there called Mahalakshmi Talkies. And with my Mr. Chauhan, my rickshawala, who was with me for those four or five days, uh, we came looking for it and he knew where it was, but he hadn't been there for a long time. 
So we find this beautiful old, uh, again, a spectacular art deco structure. And we enter the, the, the compound and as he parks and I get off, I see these posters of company. Now company was my first feature as a cinematographer, cinematographer. And uh, I said, why is a poster, you know, for a film from 2002 on a wall in, in 2020? So, and it also said daily char show, four shows every day. So I went in and I met Panditji, the manager, very sweet man. And I introduced myself and, you know, told him who had sent me and the people that I know. And I said, but why do you have a, a poster of company outside? He said, oh, it's a very popular film in Agra. We actually run it every year. In January, uh, every year, we run it for a month. And it still, you know, fetches us a couple of house full shows a week. So I said, but uh, how are you showing it? He said, we actually, we never switched to digital. We still have prints. So I said, that's really, he said, ah, why are you so interested in company? I said, well, it's my first film. Let's go inside and, you know, just the show is about to start. I said, come, let me show you my credit on screen. So Panditji and I sat in this 1930s cinema watching the first reel and he saw my name. And then he clapped and said, Are, 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 are I am good. Bombay say, the cameraman's half I am. Okay, samosa lao. Okay, chai lao. Are, 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 so all this drama happened. So what was really interesting is that I went up to the projection room and they had these old film cans lying there. And this was, we had printed about 350 uh, copies of uh, company. And this was print number 119. And when I was watching it, I realized that there was a green line running through the print. And this was one of a batch of 50 uh, that had been printed that had this aberration. And it brought back that memory of, 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 a, of a print, of a series of prints that were, you know, not perfect. And there it was, print number 119, company 2002. This is one of those sad things. It's uh, this landmark theater in Kota, Rajasthan. It was built in, nine, in the early 1940s, 1944, if I remember correctly. Bridge Talkies, named after uh, Bridgenath Singh, who's he's still alive, he's very old, but he's the Maharaja of um, Kota. And sometime in the early 2000s, uh, they want to renovate the cinema. Apparently, it was one of the landmark cinemas of Rajasthan. And they had some dispute with the Municipal Corporation of Kota, who found some loophole in their... Uh, lease agreement and decided to appropriate the cinema from the owner, uh, cancel the lease, uh, never let them renovate it. And there's a case that's been going on for 20 years in, in the courts there. That's what it looks like now. And it's so sad. It's turned into uh, the, so uh, drug addicts and, you know, lumpen elements have basically entered the cinema over the last two, 20 years. They've stolen all the seats. They stole all the projectors. That's the projection room. You can still see the windows of the projectors, uh, the projection room. And everything has been sold by weight. That's the balcony uh, staircase, the staircase that took you up to the balcony, just covered with cobwebs. And what is even worse is that it's turned into this uh, municipal dumping ground for Kota. So all the garbage from, or, well, a section of the garbage from Kota just comes and gets dumped there. This is a cinema in Satara. Uh, it just had this beautiful light coming through the broken roof. It's been shut for quite a few years. And so, uh, some, one part of the cinema has turned into a furniture workshop. And uh, he was very gracious, the owner. He let me in. And there was this just amazing light coming through. So there's a screen on the right-hand side. And that's the wooden seats on the left. Uh, I don't remember the name. Asha Talkies. This was also in Agra. This is a cinema that closed some years ago called Roxy. And uh, above the screen was this absolutely beautiful uh, stone carving of Vishnu in the sea and the Samudra Manthan and these elephants on either side with these pots, you know, you know, putting water into the sea and these beautiful waves. And the cinema was built in the, the late 1800s by a Muslim family around a Darga. I, there are some photographs of the Darga, Darga as well, which I'll bring back to you. So they built this cinema. This is now, this is Moti Talkies in Delhi. Uh, no, this is Robin Talkies in Delhi which is again uh, started as a bluebird theatre. Again, it was meant for stage performances. Uh, the, the Englishman who built it uh, named, turned it into a cinema, renamed it Robin after his son, and 1947 sold it to an Indian uh, owner who still owns it and left India. They shut down about 27, 28 years ago. And again, it is a cinema that has never been renovated since. So what you see is what it was in 1930s when it was built. 
same chairs, same walls, the same stage, just the screen that was added but never replaced. And uh, yeah, now there are holes in the roof and the sun comes in for photographers like us to find beauty in ruins. This is the beautiful cinema in Junjunu, Rajasthan. Built in 1945, a beautiful old simple art deco structure. Again, still running or closed only because of the COVID uh, situation. Untouched since 1945. You can see wooden benches in front. You can see these long strips. These are wooden benches for the, uh, the lower stalls, which were the cheaper seats. And they didn't have partitions for the seats. So they could accommodate a lot many more people. So poorer people with families, okay, with babies and children used to prefer these seats because they could actually adjust, buy two tickets for the family and then you know adjust themselves into a bench. Uh, it was just beautiful. Again, the only thing they've replaced in this in the cinema is the screen, which is a white screen. They still have the old 35mm uh, 1-1, 3 screen at the back, but there's no access, unfortunately. Yeah, this is where I think I wrote that line where this, this, the silence in an abandoned cinema is deafening and it's louder than the sound of a movie soundtrack. This was a theater in Jaipur, which was shut for many years. And uh, all I could do was open one door on the left and the light you see is just that light coming in from the door that lights up the seats and the little section of the screen. Next. This is one of the masterpieces and it's the third best cinema in the world. It's called Raj Mandir. It's in Jaipur. It was built in the 1970s uh, and designed by a very famous Art Deco architect called W.M. Nam Joshi, who's responsible for Pool Cinema in Patiala and Golcha Talkies in Delhi and Maratha Mandir in Bombay. This one is the pride of the family. It's the pride of the country. It's listed as the finest theatre in Asia, the third best cinema in the world. And it is just spectacular. They still have that velvet curtain that rises before and falls before and after the show. And uh, these... Absolutely fascinating uh, ceilings, which have multiple colors of lighting and so on and so forth. This was another cinema in Kota that had kind of fallen apart. And I found this uh, vertical, what are they called? Those cards, those display cards that had fallen behind uh, the seats. And this spooky woman on her side, peeping. This is something I found in a lot of theatres that under the screen would be some uh, theological offering. Here it says Shub Lab and I discovered uh, at some point that Shub and Lab were actually the two sons of Lord Ganesh and today is Ganesh Chaturthi so there you are. It's one serendipitous photograph. This was a cinema in uh, Nasik, Ashok Talkies which burnt down some many years ago. And it took a lot of effort to get permission here. And uh, when I walked in, there was this amazing light coming through a broken ceiling. And this is my Guru Dutt moment uh, as part of this project. Now this, uh, Udit hold this for a while. This uh, cinema is, it's called Central Talkies. And it's in a princely state of uh, Gondal in, in Gujarat. It was built by the Maharaja of Gondal. Then it was handed to this family called Jatakya, who ran it for many years. It was built in 1932, 1933. It ran houseful shows till 1989. And the story I heard from the people uh, around the theater was that in some night show in 1989, a houseful show, a man entered uh, during the screening, called someone's name, that person responded, he found him, took out a knife, stabbed him to death. Everyone ran out of the theatre and all that was left was a dead body uh, bleeding on the floor. And from that day onwards, nobody ever came back to the theatre. That was the day, the last show that was ever shown in that cinema. Everybody felt, the local people felt that there was this ghost there and uh, we shouldn't go back into the cinema. So it, it shut in 1989 and uh, when I reached this theatre, the lobby was a sugarcane, sugarcane juice shop run by this guy called Raju Bhai, who was the son of the projector operator of the theatre. So Raju Bhai, in exchange for the space, become the caretaker of a cinema because these places get you know uh, misused by a lot of people. 
So he ran his juice shop and he looked after the theater. It took me three visits to him. Wait, wait, I'll just go back. Uh, and this is a very interesting story. It took me three trips to him and to convince him to let me shoot. Finally, he got fed up, I think, in the morning, seeing me, my hopeful face uh, yet again that morning. I said, Chalo, Heman, bhai, here, chabi, aapko jo karna hai. Lekin taale laga dena, sab. Just lock up everything before you finish, after you finish. So I went into the theater and uh, there was this beautiful light on the screen. Again, you can see this curved balcony, which meant that it was built as a theater for uh, theatrical performances and musical performances. I went up, I went closer, and at some point the sun kind of moved and went off the screen and went to the rear of the screen, behind the screen. I suddenly saw this, uh, you know, the strange uh, structure behind. I've picked up a, uh, a chair from outside. I came in, climbed onto the screen, went behind and discovered that it was this old style uh, theatrical uh, backstage, which had pulleys and chains for scenery to be moved. It had these passages that led to green rooms, which unfortunately weren't accessible. And it was just this entire culture that, you know, is kind of forgotten. He didn't tell me the name of the owner. I came to Rajkot and I was talking to another elderly uh, cinema owner who was very curious about what I was doing. And he said, so where all have you been? So I started telling him where I'd been. And he said, oh, you've been to Gondal. Did you do Central Trophies? I said, yes, I did. He said, have you spoken to Harish Bhai? I said, actually, I've been trying to find out the name of the number of the owner, but I've not managed so far. He said, yeah, yeah, one sec. He picks up the phone and says, Harish Bhai, there's this gentleman here. I'm giving him your number. He's going to call you at five o'clock today. So at five o'clock, I call Mr. Harish Jatakya and I ask him if I can come and meet him. So he says, Heman, look, I'm 86 years old and I go for dialysis twice a week and today is my day of dialysis. So I have a half an hour, uh, 45 minutes to talk to you. So if you need to speak to me, I'm free right now. So he told me the history of the theater and uh, a lot of anecdotes and the films that were, you know, Jubilee hits and so on and so forth. And then at about 5.40, we'd been talking for about 40 minutes. He said, you know, it's time for me to leave. But I have something to say to you. I said, yes, sir. He says, Himan, you know, I'm an old man and I'm not well. And chances are that by the time your book is published, I'll probably be dead, you know, long since dead. He said, but from wherever I am, you know, my blessings are with you. And I just want to say one thing. He said, you know, this family was run by, our, this theatre was run by our family for so many decades. And it was always something that, you know, made me really unhappy uh, that it closed while I was running it. And it seemed like I'd failed my family and their flagship business, you know, which was this beautiful theater. And he says, today, you know, talking to you and the fact that you, without my permission, managed to convince Raju Bhai and go and shoot this, this old theater of mine. He said, you've made an old man very happy, you know. He said, suddenly I'm going to die feeling that finally my theater that I, you know, was my biggest disappointment and my biggest failure is going to find a place in a book and be immortalized. Thank you, Heman. I said, This was a cinema in Wankaner, again owned by the royal family of Wankaner. I heard a story is that I had to wait outside the palace for a couple of hours and uh, prove that I was, wasn't an assassin or something. And uh, finally, through various secretaries and so on, I got an appointment with the prince. Uh, I was asked to come to uh, the prince's office, which was in the town of Wankaner. And I didn't know whether to walk in, you know, bent over and, you know, bowing and scraping off. The prince turned out to be a wonderful, tall, handsome man in his 30s, very, very well spoken and very fascinated by what I was doing. So they would built the cinema in the 60s where they'd taken a section of their uh, uh, office block, the old castle of the, the fortress office block, extended the walls and traded the cinema. And finally, they shut it in, in the late 80s. And during the earthquake, the roof fell down. So they've had it cleared and it's just been lying there since. And if you zoom in closer, uh, which you can't do at the moment, but you can still see the remains of uh, the row, the seating rows, A, B, C, D, E, F on the side. What you see in front is uh, where the stream and, and speakers used to be. There are some speakers still there. Above you is the, what used to be the balcony. And I'm standing in the upper stall uh, looking into the cinema. Uh, 
certain cinemas in certain towns used to have sections and ticket windows and seating that were dedicated to women. And this is a box that was dedicated to women. The cinema was shut. And I just found it really funny that there were these two uh, Ramlila statues of uh, uh, Ram and Sita uh, under the <laughs> Mahilai sign. This was in Nagpur. No, Jabalpur. This was a cinema in Jabalpur. Seats, beautiful seats. This is Prabhat Cinema Pune. And I can do an entire exhibition or do an entire book just on cinema seats. This was again a 1920s cinema. Uh, just go back for a moment, Odit. This was a 1920s cinema that belonged to this uh, family that had uh, given it to another uh, company to run. After many battles and court cases, they got it back. And the current owner decided he didn't want to renovate it into a fresh cinema. He decided to restore it. It's one of the few cinemas that I've come to that has been restored to 100% originality of what it was when it began. And even the color of the seats is the same. And I love the way that, uh, you know, the, the backs are blue and the seats are red. So I get this from a vantage point. I get this lovely, you know, red receding into blue. Uh, what a beautiful cinema. Now you can move. These are from Sat... Where was this? Katni. Riva. This is Riva, Madhya Pradesh. Again, a beautiful cinema uh, uh, shut for many years. I actually wandered into uh, this lower area, not realizing it was actually water that had got caked over the years. So I ended up up, up to my knees in dirty old water. But these are beautiful old wooden seats. And uh, we opened a door on the sides. So the blue light coming in is, from actually, uh, is actually from one of the doors, uh, the exit doors. Next. Old seat frames. Old seat frames in Rajasthan. Uh, so this was the era from when uh, seats were made of wooden slats. And there was a, there was a reason why... They, just go back. There was a reason why they would make uh, the seats in the lower stalls and upper stalls with slats with little gaps in them. So the people who used to were in the habit of spitting paan on the seat in front. Uh, couldn't do it because if they spat on the, the, the back of a seat, it would, you know, stain the shirt of the person sitting on it. And this is just one of those funny anecdotes of cinema, cinemas of your Just beautiful old balcony. It's discarded seats on a stairwell. Projection rooms. I've been shooting projection rooms. I have a whole series of projection rooms and gods and goddesses in projection rooms. So these were the rooms in which you see these two devices where a spool, a, a, a spool that had run out would be loaded and then uh, wound. This is where they would store the reels number-wise. This is an old projection room. It had one green uh, window and one uh, transparent window. I found a porno in one of the projection rooms. So that's a woman naked uh, astride someone. This is just a piece of film lying in a projection room. That's another piece of film lying in a projection room. In one cinema in Rajasthan, in the projection room, I found these old spools and I found one uh, photograph of Suraya and one of uh, Madhubala. Uh, Nim, I've forgotten. One was Madhubala and one was uh, the lady who married Fali Mistri, famous old actress. There's a big prevalence of gods and goddesses in projection rooms. So you have Krishna, Shiva and here's some dusty old film in a projection room just discarded lying there. So this is one of, one of the series of portraits that I'm... Uh, Udit, just hold on to this. I'm going to tell a little story. This, this, this picture and the previous picture. So I'll just tell you one last story. Then maybe we can just run the slideshow and then we can do the Q&A. So this is a cinema in Patiala. It's called Malwa Talkies. And the gentleman sitting there is one of my series of portraits of projectionists. And his name is Gurbaksh Singh. He is in his late 70s. And he's worked here since he was 16 years old. Uh, and now just move, as you can see, he's a slim, tall man with short hair. Now, uh, just move to the next uh, picture. So this is Gurbaksh Singh's license from, I think it's from 1976 or 1975 or something. And you can see he's a Sikh, right? He has, he has a beard, he has a pagri. So I looked at his license and I said, Gurbaksh uh, how come, you know, you've, you're a Sikh in this and now you, you know, don't have your pagri and you don't have your cash. So he said, look, Hemant, uh, 
you know, we were so committed to our work and we used to work so many hours every day. And you know how hot it gets in those old projection rooms. So I wouldn't get time to wash my hair. And I actually went to the Gurdwara one day and I begged forgiveness of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. I said, I'm going to cut my hair because of a practical problem, not because I'm, you know, taking a, a step away or looking away from Sikhism. I still owe my allegiance to you. I still owe my faith and discipline and my love to you. But under circumstances, I, I have to cut my hair because I can't keep, keep it clean. So I still have my kada and my kanga and my kacha and my kipan, but I have to sacrifice my kish. So he had his hair cut so that he could do his job. So that you can just run the slideshow now, if you like, whatever's left uh, for a few minutes, so, and then we can clear another portrait of a projectionist. So while the slideshow is running, um, Himan, there's a question from Rooks around, yes. uh, you know, uh, by how do you have a maximum number of cinema halls that you aim to do? And if I may add a little bit uh, to the same question, uh, also, right. do you, you know, how do you see this journey culminating? I mean, you know, as an impact, what do you, do you have a thought around what do you want to achieve as this journey culminates? So, um, I did want to represent um, every state in India. I've done 10 so far. And uh, because of the coronavirus thing, of course, I've had a six month setback. So I'm having to rethink my entire plan. I also can't spend another two years or three years doing one project. However, um, I've done 450 odd cinemas in 10 states so far. The problem is that every single theater comes up with something that I wasn't expecting. You know? Whether it's uh, a projector or whether it's uh, you know, the seats or the screen or some architectural uh, detail or I can't do all of them. I know I'll do as many as I can. So what I do, what I do is I uh, choose a state and I make a route of all the major towns and do a little research uh, 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 as what is possible. Locate some cinemas, look in the districts, not just in those towns, but in the districts, we'll say within 100 to 200 kilometers. I do start that route and I stop at each of these towns and through my associations with people there, I get information. I get information of cinemas that will not be on, you know, internet anymore, uh, which don't exist in the cyber world at all. And uh, I have made contacts even as far as Arunachal, Manipur, uh, Nagaland, uh, Meghale. I do want to go there. There aren't too many cinemas there, uh, but I will go there. I've made contacts in Calcutta. I've streamlined my South Indian uh, journey to cinemas that are unrenovated. Because I think single screen cinemas still run quite well in the South. Cinema is really big. But they've been turned into these big ice cream, you know, these fairy tape, fairy castles with all these colors. And I don't want to really shoot those, barring the ones that are really important. So I hope to do a thousand cinemas. I think that was my basic goal. I should finish 500 in the next month and a half. At which point I have a publisher on board. So we're going to, you know, put this book together. The idea is to uh, create a volume which shows you the grandeur and uh, the, the beauty of cinema as it used to be, of cinema exhibition spaces as they used to be, you know. Because after 2025, maybe by 2027, I don't think any of these places are going to be standing even, you know. And I just wanted uh, subsequent generations to have one ready reference of what cinema meant to Indians and what single screen cinemas meant to cinema exhibition in the first place. So I have a series of exhibitions that I've planned on various themes based on uh, the photographs that I have. As you can see, I've very meticulously shot these cinemas for their different spaces within spaces. And the book, of course, is, is something that I definitely want to do. Uh, after I finish these 500, the rest of the cinemas are going to be, the rest of the journey is going to be clubbed with other projects that I do. So if I go to South India for a certain project, I will locate the cinemas that I need to do and do them simultaneously. Just to also, I think, expand my mind a little bit, not be stuck in you know, doing one thing. And just do three or four projects simultaneously. I'm, I'm in no rush. Uh, you know, I, I, I need to get the first book out by Diwali next year, which I'm on, on course for. And I hope that answers your question. Um, the next question comes from Priya. Um, and she's asking if you ever alter or adjust anything in your frame, 
which you feel may make you make your photograph better or do you take it as it is every single photograph that i have taken on this project i have never adjusted anything um barring once i think once i was in that the cinema theater that i just you, everyone just saw with the broken roof that i said was from uh, the royal family of wankaner i was walking down these broken stairs and there were these these uh, film strips that were lying all over the place and i just picked up one and i saw amrish puri in it and there was no other way of shooting it because it wasn't in a position that i could actually you know get a photograph where that piece of uh, positive would have a, a light coming in from behind to illuminate it so i think the only thing i've ever adjusted in my life is i picked up that uh, roll of film and i've casually flung it over these banisters uh, and i did it twice so that i could get amrish puri clear in that frame but otherwise no i think the whole point is to capture the space as it is i'm not here to beautify something i'm not here to uh, you know create a situation that makes a photograph better i think the whole point of this project has been to capture life as it is you know the the, the theater in exactly the way i find it uh the next question is actually from udit um how do you how do you sh shoot dingy dark cinemas where there is no available daylight uh what's your process and you know how do you go about it <laughs> ram ka ram ka naam leke tripod pe no no uh, so i've been shooting uh, I've, i've followed a very strict discipline on this uh, visual discipline for this project so the camera is always on a tripod i have two cameras so one is always on a tripod with a one with one particular lens which is the equivalent of a, i use micro four thirds so i use a 7 to 14 mm pro lens which is in 35 mm terms of 14 to a 28 and i shoot on a tripod so uh, i i also am one of those uh, peculiar photographers who never adjust the base asa unless i'm absolutely you know in a in a tight spot so i've shot the entire series Uh, of 450 cinema so far on 200 ASA, which is the base uh, ISO for the camera, and I just do exposures based on the duration required. So I'll do two-minute exposures, one-minute exposures, 30-second exposures. Uh, I don't like. I I carry a torch. There have been maybe maybe one or two occasions where I've maybe bounced if I'm facing the seating with the screen behind me, and it's completely dark. I've taken my torch and I bounced it off uh, the screen. so i get a little bit of fill you know just to get a little bit of detail but yeah 99.99% i just put it on tripod and adjust my uh, i sometimes need to use a, a torch just to find a focus point but i won't use it to actually light uh, the space so i've shot cinemas where the only light coming in is coming in is through a broken exit a piece of glass that used to have exit written on it you know over an exit door and it just creates the mood you know if i was to light something or you know do things like that uh, i'd be killing the mood so uh, i shoot absolutely totally natural light some cinemas of course which are still running may have their own bulbs and you know theater lighting which is makes it easier for me but the abandoned and shut theaters which you know have no electricity or theaters that have had to you know sneak in through windows or go under shutters and rip my pajamas and jump over walls those i shoot just exactly the way they are the the last one and i think probably um, a very apt question to end the talk uh, right is from vasudha on how have you managed to cope if at all with the melancholy that hangs in all these abandoned theaters <sighs> i was trying to write the 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 uh, the forward to my book some days ago and i was talking about how when i walk into one of these old cinemas which is abandoned okay i'm strictly talking about an abandoned cinema i can hear you know somewhere in my in my in my subconscious i can hear movie soundtracks i can hear cheering and i can hear seats being shaken i can hear people whistling i can hear uh, money being thrown the clink of coins being thrown i can hear you know the sound of the projector running i think i just find myself imagining that space when it was alive and i think that's what allows me and my spirit to remain positive and uh, non melancholic just by imagining it as a running theater and with the joy that people felt the anticipation that people had 
the the you know the quiver of excitement when you watched a film in those days where there was no publicity even the songs of a movie used to come up only after the film was released on you know binata geetmala and on all india radio so anyone who saw that film seeing anything and everything about that film for the first time other than the poster so i just keep myself in that happy state of mind that this must have been this beautiful you know uh, thunderingly alive space i just happened to be here at the wrong time but it has a good memory thank you folks uh, i think that will be all for today uh, thank you so much hemant for sharing your journey on uh, single screen uh, theaters and your uh, you know passion uh, from which started from cinema halls to uh, from cinema to cinema halls and how you move from uh, motion imagery to uh, still imagery uh, thank you so much uh, for giving us uh, thank this thank you thank you very much thank you everyone thank you